Shut up and sit down. Hey you scallywags, I think I may need to start doing these toy news episodes more regularly as this episode is jam packed full with the small toys that we love so much. We have updates from Heya, Hasbro, Toys Alliance, Joy Toy and some sprinkled in updates from San Diego Comic Con. But before that, Soldier Story is a company I've not heard of before but are producing a brand new 118 scale IP. Name is SSE001 Exoskeleton Armor Suit XO01. Not really the catchiest of names, but they are producing a 118 scale figure set. The draw being this mech with female pilot and also comes with two male soldier figures. The articulation for the arms and legs seem to be a single joint, but that doesn't look like it hinders any movement, but won't know till we get them in hand. They look highly detailed and they're eyeing a Q1 2024 release window. These will retail for about $160. It's currently available through Gundamit of Pre-Order and other places. Let's have a look at a few things coming out from Hasbro and their TVC collection. The Ahsoka Tano series will be dropping on Disney Plus at the end of this month. And of course, there is a new figure to go along with it. This does not look that much different from what we've seen before. So I'd like to do a comparison to see what is different. She'll be released at some point in November. A retail for about $20, just under really. From that series, this is Sabine Wren. Set after the fall of the Empire, Ahsoka follows former Jedi Knight Ahsoka Tano as she investigates an emerging threat to a vulnerable galaxy. Sabine comes in deluxe packaging, which basically means box, and will retail for about $30, expected about October time. She also comes with a helmet you can put over her head, but it does make her head look slightly large. We recently had Paz Vizsla. This is Pre Vizsla. Pre Vizsla was governor of Concordia, a moon of Mandalore during the Clone Wars. Behind closed doors, he led Death Watch, a secret group of commandos seeking control of Mandalore. Mandalorians already look pretty cool and Pre Vizsla looks especially badass. Expect it in about November time with his dark saber. Retail for about $20. From Knights of the Old Republic, Darth Revan. Revan left Coruscant, a hero of the Jedi Civil War, and returned a traitorous Sith disciple, bent on destroying the Republic. Revan comes complete with soft goods, cape and skirt thing, along with two lightsabers and plastic hood that's removable. Retail for about $20, available in November. From Rebels and the upcoming Ahsoka series, Grand Admiral Thrawn. Grand Admiral Thrawn, a male Chiss tasked with dismantling the rebellion on Lothal, was known for his brilliant strategic mind and ruthlessness. Looking less like Elon Musk and more like his animated counterpart, Thrawn will be available in November for about $20. Through Hasbro's HasLab and the Ahsoka series, this is Ghost. Ghost is one of a kind HasLab vehicle inspired by the highly anticipated Disney Plus series, Star Wars Ahsoka. Now this is a huge and highly detailed vehicle with many different play features. This has removable components which allows you to better see and place your figures inside the vehicle with minimal hassle. As well as the cockpit, there are different areas within the ship that you're able to access. And there's also a smaller ship that resides on the back of the Ghost that you can pilot independently of the Ghost. With this HasLab now successful at 8,000 backers, it will also come with the Vintage Collection exclusive carded 3.75 inch General Hera Syndulla figure with three accessories. 
There are stretch goals, of course. The first is Ezra to unlock. The next is Kanan with two heads. And then finally, Zeb. I do hope they release these separately. This project will set you back a whopping $500 and will be charged on the 7th of September. So you have till then to make your decision and will be released fall 2024. Here is the latest update from Heia Toys. Ready for the most unforgiving place on earth with his soft goods cloak, Cursed Earth Judge Dread. First introduced in 1977, the Cursed Earth is the irradiated wasteland separating the great megacities of the eastern, western and southern coasts of North America. The result of the devastating atomic wars of the 2070s, this blasted landscape is populated by mutants, marauders, cannibals, and even rampaging Tyrannosaurus Rex. It is an unforgiving place where even judges fear to tread. But if there's one future cop who can bring law to this lawless land, then it's Judge Dredd. This version of Judge Dredd is scheduled for Q1 2024 release at $24.99. From Heia's highly popular line, G.I. Joe, this is Flint. Flint is a mission specialist and leader for G.I. Joe, providing tactical information and training to the team to make sure they're ready for whatever Cobra throws at them. He's a living database of scenarios and tactics and always has his team prepared when he leads them into the field. Flint never lets a little or a lot of hard work stop him from tackling a challenge. For Flint, success isn't the point. He's constantly striving to push himself beyond expectations, even his own. With his resolute face and piercing eyes, Flint is unmistakable. He wears a fitted camouflage combat suit, ensuring ease of movement on the battlefield. The addition of black gloves provides protection and enhances his agility. Do for release the second quarter of 2024 at about $25. Firefly, the Cobra Covert Ops agent, is a faceless master who operates without leaving a physical trail or digital footprint. In and out without a trace, the anonymity of his destruction serves as his calling card. He trained as a ninja, mastering skills like stealth and infiltration before turning to demolitions and sabotage. Firefly has a talent for discerning and exploiting flaws or fracture points in structures, be they bridges, bunkers or relationships. With expertly applied pressure, he derives great satisfaction in bringing down his target. Scheduled to be released in the first quarter of 2024 at about $25. Teased in a previous episode of 118 Toy News, Heia are bringing Star Trek into 118 scale. On the day of James T. Kirk's birth, his father dies on his damaged starship in the last stand against a Romulan mining vessel looking for Ambassador Spock, who in this time has grown on Vulcan disdained by his neighbours for his half-human heritage. 25 years later, James T. Kirk has grown into a young rebellious troublemaker. Challenged by Captain Christopher Pike to realise his potential in Starfleet, he comes to annoy Academy instructors like Commander Spock. Suddenly, there is an emergency on Vulcan and the newly commissioned USS Enterprise is crewed with promising cadets like Uhara, Sulu, Chekhov and even Kirk himself, thanks to McCoy's medical trickery. This crew will have an adventure in the final frontier where the old legend is altered forever as a new version of the legend begins. But for only three movies. So these are not what I was expecting from Star Trek um, Heia. I was thinking they'd do the old school crew. Uh, this J.J. Abrams one, though, is expected, I suppose, being that it is the most recent version of um, this crew. I would like to see Heia tackle the original, though. These two will be available uh, first quarter of 2024 at about $25. It does actually utilize a new mechanism for the torso, so that'll be interesting to see that play out and how that works. 
Ayo showcased some prototypes of SDCC from their new Star Trek line. Let's take a look at some pretty images. Sticking with SDCC for the moment, we're going to check out what Toys Alliance has been up to at the convention. Thanks to 796 Studios for the images. First up seems to be a newly heavily armed Ankylo. Next is that um, thing that goes on the Ankylo that's going to be released in a few months, I believe. And then there's this other strange vehicle which looks like it might be transformable and now we've got some variations on the dwarf mech that's recently been released from omanga and there's some new humanoid figures which look to have parts from yamato uh, but looks like they could be a different faction altogether and of course, the convention exclusives. Thanks to 796 Studios, Fryhole Customs, Red Canada for trying to get these for me. And special thanks to Austin for grabbing me the Kakeshi set. The first of the convention exclusives is Aihi. Aihi. So this is basically the Republic of Yamato buck. Uh, with all the parts and weapons from Republic of Yamato with one of the old school acid rain heads all in black with the red striking eyes uh, that's akin to Jinro retailing for about $65 and one I still need next of the convention exclusives is the Kikeshi set so this is already on the channel I've got a review up again thanks to Austin for sourcing this for me retailing for about $145 if you can find any of these uh, exclusives will be in a few other conventions I believe um, definitely an homage to Akira like the um, Capybara Red from a few years ago now from your standard release from Acid Rain and Toys Alliance which also seem to be difficult to get hold of from the stealth team this is Nua Nero Nua when you're born in Balawar, the great mountain bastion of Argots, it means something. It means you're expected to be a defender at least, and probably a hero. And when a Balawardan talks about being a hero, what they mean is getting out there and leading from the front lines. Maybe part of this sentiment stems from the fact that Balawardans are just built different. Something in the air perhaps, but a lot of Balawardans are more muscular than their southern counterparts. Enter Ram Nur, a typical Balawadan boy, strong and well built from a military family. It was expected by one and all that he would join the vanguard just as his father had before him. But Nur was earmarked to join the 15th Stealth Team, a special operations unit promoted by Senator Bros to replace the Bucks team. The other stealth operatives were surprised to get such a Balawadan to join them. Generally, to be more suitable for undercover missions, operatives would need to be small and swift, but they quickly realized that he was not only quick and quick-witted, but also possessed a natural understanding of how to read the battlefield, such that within just two years, Nur was promoted to captain. Nur's team are often assigned top secret missions in the Grey Zones, where the powerful Balawad carries on the heroics of his ancestors. Nur is expected at the end of January 2024 is at $44.99. Joining Nur in January is Nephilim Stormer. During infiltration operations, the first lines of defense can often be snuck through using weaknesses and oversights in the enemy's line of defense. But any high priority target is inevitably going to be tougher to break down. That's where the Stormers of the 15th Stealth Team come in. Equipped with heavy power armor and wielding dual arm mechanical appendages, allowing them to wield multiple weapons at once, the Stormers are a force to be reckoned with in combat. But not only are they strong, they're smart. 
trained to quickly identify structural weaknesses and exploit them to maximum effect, allowing allied units to make it through and providing the cover they need to make sure they get out. As Senator Bros, de facto leader of Argots, likes to say, if you can't win through the back door, you go through the front. The Nephilim Stormer is based off the Mason Buck, so it's larger than your normal Acid Rain figures. Will retail for about $48.99 through Peer Club. And last from the stealth team is the Vindicator Laurel. Following the successful deployment of the first Revenant LA-6E units, engineers at Laurel Inc. decided to explore different possible iterations of the Revenant model. A key point of discussion revolved around feedback from the 15th stealth team that the Revenant was unmatched on the open field, but could struggle in the difficult terrain presented by urban warfare. How could the original Revenant be modified to dominate urban environments in the same way it dominated the open field? In answer to this question, the Vindicator Laurel LAA-6E unit came into being. The Vindicator, piloted exclusively by the elite soldiers of the 15th Stealth Team, has the same T-blade weaponry and stealth cloaking armor that made the Revenant so devastating, but it also has four legs to maneuver more smoothly over uneven terrain, allowing pilots to keep up with and fight alongside deployed infantry to eliminate opposing combatants during raids. And once it hits enemy front lines, there is no escape. Only vindication for the Argurtan Fallen as the contested city comes under Federation control. It's a shame that the pilot for the mech, Selene, is sold out, uh, including all three of these stealth team uh, on Peer Club at the moment, so it'll be a bit difficult to get hold of these. Uh, the mech will be about $123.99 if you can find it in Jan. Coming in February is the EOS Destroyer set. The EOS Destroyer is an anti-armor unit under the 303rd Marine. The members are selected and well trained for their ability to shoot precisely even when loaded or moving between obstacles. As the commander of the EOS Destroyer, Ulla often triggers the pirates to gnash their teeth but is also a controversial figure among the commanders. Ulla was a former pirate who lived on an island conquered by pirates. The island inhabitants were forced to swear allegiance to the pirate regime for protection. Thus, she never had a choice but to leave her fisher lifestyle and join the pirate gang. No mercy was shown when she was slaughtering other pirates, which quickly established her ranking as a minor leader, but she never attacked merchant ships or civilians. Rather, she would engage in internal fighting between the smaller pirate forces. The growth of Argots ignited her hope to anonymously save the victims. She utilised her familiarities towards the maritime and climate, secretly rescued hostages and slaves, and prepared rafts for them to drift towards Argots. Sometimes she even leaked intelligence of the pirates. Ironically, her younger sister Mida exposed Ulla's hidden plans to the captain. At the moment of Ulla's execution, the 303rd Marine team who tracked down the source of the intelligence rescued her in time. So there's been much discussion about this online as an anti-armor set. They are showing quite a bit of skin, and not the appropriate attire, which is not unheard of in the Acid Rain world since Jesse just had a bra previously. <laughs> this set will be $63.99 available at the end of February. Next up from the 303rd, we have the Ionis Laurel set. The Argus 303rd Marine team had been conducting long-term cleanups against coastal pirates. Moreover, with the disbanding of the Bucks team, these events triggered a desperate counter-attack by the pirates, which led to the formation of a united pirate coalition. Faced with such a massive union and a new commanding system that only recently came into place, supporting forces were unable to arrive in time. At a commander's meeting, Eos Destroyer Commander Ulla proposed a countermeasure that would prevent the suffering of heavy casualties. This involved creating a facade of a heavily defended coastline, which in reality was a well-laid trap. They aimed to lure perpetrators and scatter them, defeating them one by one, while simultaneously stalling for the imminent arrival of reinforcements. 
Based on Ulla's concept, engineers worked day and night to equip all multifunctional unmanned reconnaissance Phasmatodia URV-4M with cannons, reconditioning them as self-propelled artillery and positioning them at regular bombardment points as decoys. Meanwhile, an array of Laurel units were modified, primed for an ambush and ready to engage in a wave of close combat. Behind this crucial victory was a fleet of Laurel units that bore a striking resemblance to the image of pirates. This later paved the way for the mass production of the prototype, the Ionis Laurel LA-6M. This is expected at the end of February, but there have been delays of Toys Alliance releases, so maybe a bit later than that. Will retail for about $123.99. Now we'll quickly go through another huge Joy Toy update. We start with a possible release. So it looks like Joy Toy will be getting into the horse game. They have done uh, dogs before and it looks like they're now working on their own horse with maybe a new figure on this one here. For those of you clamoring for the more realistic army type figures, Joy Toy have you covered with two new releases. This first one is Ranger, will retail for about $30 and will be expected in November time. This is PLA Strategic Support Group. Now although there's only one of him, I think his face is covered up enough that you can Probably just pretend that it's not the same person repeated over and over. Also expected in November for about $30. Corvus Belli Infinity Knights of Santiago from Pan Oceana. This guy has a similar aesthetic to the Hospitalers, which are, I just got in and I'm really enjoying. It'll retail for about $47 and will be released very, very soon. So watch this space. Shipping now is Knights of Justice from Pano Siena. Pano is looking to be one of my favorite factions from Infinity so far. I just love this sort of robot aesthetic and he retails for about $50. Joining the Knights of Justice and shipping now are the Teutonic Knights. So just like the Hospitallers, these three all look to be the exact same model. So it doesn't look like there's anything differentiating them from the others, maybe besides uh, loadout uh, or the weapons. But other than that, they all seem to be exactly the same. So you can army build the other two as well, but they're just a little bit on the more expensive side set will set you back about $118. With the Ultramarines version already reviewed on the channel and Space Wolves to come, the new Intercessors from Warhammer 40k are shipping now for about $25. The Honor Guards are also shipping now from Joy Toy with the Chapter Champion at $67, the Chapter Ancient at $73, and the Honor Guard 1, $67. Honor Guard 2, also at $67. So we have three here expected in September, but one shipping now. Black Templar's Emperor's Champion Bayard's Revenge is shipping now for about $52. Joining his Black Templar's Brethren in September is High Marshal Hellbrecht. He looks like the most bling of the Black Templars so far and will retail for about $71. Ultramarine's Primaris Captain with Relic Shield and Power Sword. I'm pretty sure this guy featured in one of the Warhammer trailers from Games Workshop. Anyway, he'll be retailing for about $66. Chaos Space Marine Black Legion Chaos Lord in Terminator armor. I'll be interested to see how this is compared to the Terminators they had from the Black Legion before and see if they've made any improvements, which most likely they did. 
Um, this will retail for about $71 in September. Well, what do we have here? More Ultramarines, this time in Terminator armor. Sergeant Belen here, almost said Belend, is the only one with an unhelmeted head included, and he'll retail for about $47. Just like the recent Blood Angels Terminators we've recently seen, Brother Acastian here will come equipped with shield and power hammer. Will retail for about $44. Compared to the others, Brother Sarian here is a bit more plain with just the one gun. Uh, but he'll be shipping for $44. Coming equipped with a gun and power sword, Sergeant Tekonan will be priced at about $44 as well and has a more unique helmet. To rival the weapon of one of the Black Legion Terminators released before, Brother Orionen will be retailing for $44. My favourite of the bunch, due to the huge rocket launcher weapon thing on his back and the chainsaw on his left arm, is Brother Andrus, who will retail for about $47. We have another Terminator Chaos Lord in red this time and two named characters. First we see here is Mephiston of the Blood Angels. He'll have two capes, one kind of blingy and flowing to the right like his mini, and the other, not so much, will retail for about $69. From the Salamanders, we have Captain Adrax Agatone. He'll retail for about $66, and we'll expect him and Mephiston both in September. Chaos Space Marine Crimson Slaughter Sorcerer Lord in Terminator armor it's really his helmet here that's caught my attention and how beefy he looks he's expected in august for about 66 dollars the new chapter joins the joy toy range the white consoles first up are two intercessors one here with a head from one of the blood angels previously but they both seem to be exactly the same besides the unhelmeted head uh, with this head coming from the ultramarines a blade guard veteran uh, which was used twice before one on the 1.0 body the other on a 2.0 both will retail for about 33 dollars to help spruce up the two plane intercessors we're getting from the white consoles we have Captain Messinius. I wish Joyter would actually give us optional power fists, as this, not being in a fist, looks slightly odd. These guys are expected in October, and Messinius will retail for about $55. My favourite of these announcers will be dropping my birthday month in November. First up from the Ultramarines is Chief Librarian Tigurius. So the last librarian we got for the Ultramarines was not that great. There is a review on my channel, you can check it out. Floppy and things fell off everywhere. This hopefully will be a lot better. Retail for about $71. So my absolute favorite of all the Warhammer 40k announcements from the past month or so is for the Space Wolves and it's Ayak Rock Fist in Terminator armor. So this guy just looks so awesome. He kind of looks like um, God of War guy Kratos, um, but even more badass. He's huge compared to your normal Space Marine and bigger than even your normal Terminators. He'll retail for about $69. Looking even more techie than the ultramarines tech marine or the iron priest from the space wolves is iron hands iron father Ferros. this guy looks chunkier than normal and has 
ton of stuff all around. It'll retail for about $74. We leave the biggest to last, and it's the Grey Knight's Nemesis Dread Knight. So this thing is huge at 42 centimeters. This is probably the biggest mech that Joy Toy have ever done. And it also can house a Grey Knight Terminator uh, in the front, like a baby cradle kind of thing. There are two versions of this that will be available. One without the figure, which will be at about $332. And one with the figure, Cadden Verbova, who released uh, before, at $380. This is expected to release in January. Whew, well, that's it. Uh, this was a long one and it was a very difficult one to put together I had problems with the microphone and all of that So it took ages to do but we got there more content to come if you like this Please click the thumbs up for more content subscribe Check links in the description to buy your own joy toy and support the channel and I'll scale you later